What EA just decided to do with Kurt 0411 is disgraceful, despicable, reprehensible, and should not be accepted by the gaming community at large. Smash! JT. For those of you unfamiliar with the situation, Kurt 0411 is a professional EA FIFA soccer player and extremely passionate about his craft. Like anybody who plays the game professionally, they take it extremely seriously, their life revolves around it, and they want to see the best out of it. And I'd like to think the passion and frustration that boiled over with Kurt 0411 here that we'll talk about came from a place of good, came from a place of wanting to make the game better. His passion wasn't so negative that it was just trying to take the game down. It was passion from, I want this to be better. Here's why it sucks. Here's what you need to do to make it better and get the players back on your side, EA, which in a way is kind of respectable. Now, I don't want this video to come off like I am hardcore just defending Kurt 0411 to the death because ultimately it is up to EA if they're going to ban someone or not based off the actions that people do. It's their game, it's their media, it's their thing. They can do whatever they want with it. But in this case, I feel like they overstepped their bounds just a little bit. Now, let me dive into a little bit of the details here just to give you guys the background on it. EA, we'll start with the end and move our way back. They just came out with a press release yesterday that announced that they were going to be banning Kurt0411 from FIFA and removing their username from their servers. And they've already talked to him in the past about a lot of this stuff. And they just, they've reached their wits end. They are banning him because he was threatening EA employees, which is unacceptable because he was bashing the game because he was just causing a big disturbance and they want the game to be peaceful. They want the game to be about fun. I get it. But when you start diving into the details of what the actions were that took place, I personally don't feel like they were justified in banning this player from the sport. He was, according to Kurt, the number two FIFA player in the world and they banned him because he was trash talking their game. It almost feels like silence and criticism. It truly does. And EA is using leverage of the, this whole idea of harassment and uh, threats as a way to silence criticism and make people get back to spending money on the game and not focusing on the problems that the game has. And why I say that, let me show you a quick video here so that you can make up your mind. Listen. There is no sugar coat in this. We are at a critical, critical stage. It's make or break. And now more than ever, it's time to find out who is and who isn't on our side. He cares more about FIFA Mobile than our game. He's a coward who instead of fighting, takes the easy way out. He's washed up. He wants nothing more than to get back on EA's good books and become a game changer. He's a one event wonder. He's still doing play reviews in August. He's got a boss who tells him what he can and cannot do. He's so focused on sucking up to EA, he's about to drop another division. King of Twitch, please. He's too busy getting his ass whipped every single day by a ninja. As far as my understanding is concerned, that is what EA is describing and specifically talking about when referencing the threats of employees. Does he actually threaten employees though? No. But does he talk about the employees? Yeah, and that's kind of weird. I, I personally wouldn't do that, but I also don't think that would go to the point of banning. This guy is speaking out and speaking his mind. He's airing his frustrations. He's telling people to get with him on this because he's trying to create a movement to fix the game because it's broken beyond belief. EA is trying to say that he was trying to 
rally people together to attack employees because he is putting their pictures up on the screen and then saying mean things about them or why they suck or why they're dumb or whatever. And they're using that as a threat, which I guess if you twist yourself into a pretzel, I guess you could see it's a threat. But surface level stuff, the guy's just frustrated at the game, is frustrated at the devs involved. I don't agree with showcasing pictures of the devs and saying this guy sucks though. That is going a little bit too far. Not far enough to ban, but EA is using that as leverage to get rid of somebody who is basically bashing their game because it's broken. Now I would say this guy should probably find a different game to play instead of just sitting around bashing it all day. But at the same time, if he's the number two player in the world with the game, he's probably making some money off of it, probably making some good attention from his YouTube channel and social medias from it. So his brand is based around it and his passion stems from a place of wanting it to get better, from a place of ensuring future success for the franchise because if the franchise is successful going forward, his career would have been as well. So I can understand, let me get rid of that sun here. I can understand why he's frustrated at EA and I can see how EA used that to manipulate their decision so that they were able to silence this guy and move on from it. It's unfortunate. The whole situation is a mess. It kind of reminds me personally of my days back when I used to work at Sony Online Entertainment on EverQuest. And before people would log on to play EverQuest, they would be required to accept the Euler, which is the Euler was the end user license agreement, which basically stated, you don't own this game, we do. You are paying for the privilege to, to play EverQuest. You don't have the right to do what you want in this game because we ultimately, at the end of the day, own the game and we can ban you for whatever reason we want to. And I get that because you can't just let people do what they want in video games, especially if it becomes hate speech, harassment to the extreme, or just personal attacks to the extreme, things like that. I get it. You want to have some sort of control on your game because it represents your brand of your company, and you want to make sure that people ultimately are playing it for the right reasons. But in this case, I don't think the guy went too far. I think it's just a case of EA getting butt hurt that their game sucks and this guy is calling out all the problems with it, exploiting it for what it truly was and showcasing that to the world. And that didn't make EA look good. And instead of fixing the game, instead of making it better, they banned the guy. I, <laughs> that's what took place here. It's really sad because like I said earlier, this is silencing criticism. And to me, whenever you enter silence criticism territory, that is the ultimate slippery slope. Because where does it end? People are gonna start making excuses for companies here, there, and then the other thing. And then before you know it, the world turns into a complete dictatorship where only what they say goes and you no longer have a voice. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like having a voice. I like being able to speak my mind. I like being able to criticize things if I don't feel like they're right. I don't know how it works in the rest of the world, but in America, we still have that freedom with strings attached, of course, to speak our minds and let the world know how we feel about things. Companies also have the right to ban people for speaking their mind, but ultimately, customers have the money to tell companies if they're going to make these decisions going forward or not, and to let the companies know that we're not gonna stand for it. Because if a company's gonna silence a guy like Kurt0411, what's gonna stop EA from silencing anyone with any criticism on any of their games? What about how EA is one of the most unethical companies on the planet when it comes to microtransactions, or loot boxes, or loot crates, or whatever they tried to call them, those, the, the, the skirting the law back in, in the 2019, what was it? Uh, surprise mechanics, that's it. Okay, that took me a little bit to think of, but yeah, surprise mechanics. Like, this is EA. 
doing whatever they can to make as much money as possible at the end of the day. They say in this letter of banning Kurt that they're doing it because they want to promote the game and making sure people are singing Kumbaya and having fun playing the game. No, EA wants to make as much money as possible. This was a financial decision. They thought that they were losing money with this guy speaking his mind, having such an audience with him that if they silence him, the criticism would just disappear. I would like to think that that won't happen, but ultimately, EA's right. They know the game all too well. They know the cycle of news. They know this is gonna be nothing in a couple of weeks, and they'll move on like nothing ever happened. And Kurt 0411's life, as far as professional gaming, is over because he was critical of an EA game. Did he go too far? Not in my opinion. The problem is, EA could manipulate what he did into saying he went too far to use it as an excuse to get rid of the problem. The guy who was exposing EA for what they truly were. And that in itself should make everyone afraid of what the future holds for the game industry. Because if that's gonna be allowed, where's it gonna end? To me, this guy just strikes me as an overly passionate gamer that came up against the line, brushed up against what's acceptable and what's not, and entered the gray area, which EA took full advantage of in order to ban him so that they can move on with their lives. And that is truly unfortunate. I'm gonna leave the video right there. Let me know what you guys think about this situation and if you feel like EA was justified or if you feel like they overstepped their bounds. Love to hear where you stand on it. Thanks so much for watching and as always, you stay so smashing. This growing sensation, th this idea that we are powerless, th that we are voiceless, th that there's nothing we can do about it. Well, I'm here to tell you otherwise. And I know we've had to deal with those telling us to abuse the game's laws instead of actually fixing them. We've had to deal with someone who, after the year of hell that we've just been through, gave FIFA 18 a 7.5 out of 10. And we've even had those who we thought they were on our side. And then they're telling us we are making excuses? The truth is, unfortunately, these guys don't really want what's best for this game. They only care about making sure that they get invited to the next capture event or the next EA whatever event. 